Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about two really important conditions. One is adrenal fatigue and the other is hypothyroidism or low thyroid function. And we're going to be talking about the symptoms of these two conditions, how they overlap, and why sometimes your symptoms can be very confusing. But I think as we break this down, it'll make a lot more sense to you. It'll help you understand what is actually going on in your body. So um, if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist. I specialize in treating people with thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. So let's get into our topic today, which as I said, is the connection between adrenal symptoms and thyroid symptoms and why this matters if you're a thyroid patient. Now, as many of you might already be aware of this, but let me just um, elaborate on it a little bit more. The reason we care about these two systems um, is even though they are distinct and separate from one another, they seriously impact each other. So it, may, it's, it looks a little bit something like this. If you have, um, let's start with the thyroid problem. If you have a thyroid problem, it will impact your adrenals. But if you have an adrenal problem, it will also negatively impact your thyroid. So they sort of have a relationship here. And we have studies which show that as your TSH increases, which you already probably know, if your TSH is going high, that's an indication that you actually have low thyroid function. I know that's a little bit confusing, but that's actually how it works. And so what that does is it impacts your cortisol. And your cortisol can be used as a metric to understand what's going on in your adrenal glands. So a, a low thyroid function, as designated by a high TSH, will impact your cortisol level, which is another way of describing its impact on your adrenal function. And so what ends up happening is you kind of have a combination of different symptoms between both of these, and it can be really confusing for the thyroid patient. In addition, if you have a thyroid problem, which impacts your adrenals, just treating your thyroid problem with, let's say, thyroid hormone or other natural therapies, it won't completely fix your adrenal problem. You actually have to address the adrenal problem as a distinct, a distinct entity or distinct problem in order to get results there. And what I see a lot of people do is they, they continue to have symptoms that they attribute to their thyroid, but they're really symptoms of adrenal fatigue. So that's why we're here today. So let's talk about these symptoms, then we'll kind of talk a little bit about the overlap here, and then what you should do if you think this is going on in your body. So some of the symptoms, I've listed them all here of adrenal fatigue, um, and then all the symptoms of hypothyroidism over here. Um, so you can just read this list, but I'm gonna, I'll read them to you as well, or at least elaborate on them a little bit. So we have, of, of adrenal fatigue, the most common symptoms include fatigue, and this is uh, fatigue that just lasts usually throughout the day, but um, it tends to be worse, uh, especially in the morning, and it gets a little bit better at night. You can get the sensation that you're feeling wired but tired. That's again, that kind of occurs at night when you try and you know rest your head on the pillow and your brain won't your brain won't shut off and your mind just keeps racing. So that's that sort of sensation of being wired but tired. It also feels like if you know you're really tired and it feels like you need to go to bed but you close your eyes and it doesn't feel like your eyes should be closed. If you've ever had that sensation, that's what this is, wired but tired. You can also cause weight gain. Uh, which we'll talk about in just a second. It causes typically cravings for sugar or carbohydrates, and that could be pastries or uh, juices or anything that's really sugary. These people tend to have a reliance upon caffeine as a source of energy. So what that means is that you can't get up and do the things that you need to during the day without getting your cup of coffee or whatever, having a soda or an energy drink, whatever that source of caffeine comes from. People are reliant upon that for their energy. That's again, a symptom of adrenal fatigue. Another one is these people tend to be have high anxiety levels. They tend to have a reduced immune system because remember cortisol impacts your immune system and these people tend to get a lot of the illnesses that they come into contact with. You know, if they're around someone who's sick, they're going to get it. They tend to have a decreased sex drive and then they also tend to be um, not very resistant to stress. So if a stressful situation like let's just say a flat tire or something that other that normally wouldn't cause a lot of stress in your body, if you're already stressed out from everything else, that's just one extra thing on top of all the things you have to deal with, and that can sort of set you over the edge. So we call that decreased stress resiliency or decreased stress resilience. So these are the, these are the symptoms which indicate you have a problem with cortisol and or you have adrenal fatigue. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the cortisol and the TSH in just a second here, um, but I wanna go over these symptoms. Symptoms first. So then we have the hypothyroid symptoms. So we're talking about those symptoms which indicate your thyroid is not functioning well enough. It's a low or depressed thyroid. Now we have fatigue here. So again, we can match these kind of symptoms up here. So we have fatigue over here. We have cold intolerance because remember your thyroid is the thing that controls how much um, energy and heat you are producing in your body. So decreased thyroid function will cause you to feel cold all the time because your body temper temperature is actually lower than it should be. It tends to um, cause depression as opposed to anxiety here. It tends to cause brain fog. So you feel like you can't 
um, elaborate your thoughts as well as you would have otherwise. Um, and this is especially notable for people who, you know, what used to be really sharp, they used to be able to have words come to their mind um, immediately or quickly, and now they're just not the same way. So that's, that's how we sort of um, define brain fog. This one also causes weight gain. It can cause joint and muscle pain. That should be a J. Um, it can cause dry skin. It can cause constipation, infertility, and decreased sex drive. So these are all the symptoms of hypothyroidism. So let's connect a couple of these. So we have fatigue on both ends. Even though the fatigue over here is a little bit different than the fatigue over there, they can both cause low energy and fatigue. So instead of having depression, we have this, but we'll connect these because it causes mood problems. Um, we have infertility here, which can kind of be confused with decreased sex drive. And we also have decreased sex drive over here. So there's some, some overlap here. So imagine a scenario. So let's put, your, let's put this back on you for a second so you can understand what I'm saying. So imagine now you're suffering from hypothyroidism. You don't know you have an adrenal problem. And here's what, here's, here are the symptoms you have. You have fatigue. So I'll put a little circle here. That means you've got this. You've got some cold intolerance. You've got weight gain over here. You got weight gain over here. Um, you have a little bit of anxiety instead of depression. And now you have decreased sex drive. So look at, these are pretty common symptoms for people who have hypothyroidism, but look how much overlap you have between adrenal fatigue and your thyroid. So what will happen to these people is they'll start taking therapies to treat their thyroid, but they'll still make, the, so these symptoms might reduce over here, but they still have weight gain, they still have anxiety, and they still have uh, decreased sex drive. So they're still suffering from symptoms which they may attribute to their thyroid, but which are coming from their adrenals. And the only way to get rid of these things is to actually treat your adrenals and to treat your cortisol. Now, this connection is so strong, by the way. Now, many of you probably already know that I focus um, almost entirely on treating people that have thyroid problems. Um, I see this connection as being so strong that I will always, in fact, I consider adrenal treatment and adrenal supplements sort of as standard for anybody who has hypothyroidism. I don't think I've ever met anybody who has low thyroid function who also doesn't have cortisol or adrenal problems. Now, if you go to a traditional doctor, like an endocrinologist or a primary care uh, physician, they're sort of conditioned to believe that adrenal fatigue isn't a real condition. So they, they're less inclined to bring it up or to talk to you about this. In fact, they're probably not even gonna offer any therapies, which can be confusing for a patient. Um, so what I wanna do is offer you a little bit of advice as to what I think would be a good idea if you have hypothyroidism, how you can at least check your adrenal function to see if it's um, working properly. And you can do that by, let's see if you can read this here. You can do that by testing your serum cortisol, as well as all of your thyroid functions. So this would include more than just the TSH. We need free T3 and free T4, reverse T3. I'll put that as RT3 because I can't type down there or can't write down there. But in addition to checking your thyroid, you want to always check your cortisol. Always, always, always check these at the same time. That's typically why I recommend checking your thyroid labs at the beginning of the day around 8 a.m. because that's when cortisol should peak. So if you check it in your blood, cortisol, along with your thyroid, it'll give you a better idea of what's happening on this side of the equation, which may help spell out the difference between your lab tests. Now, there's a lot of controversy regarding how to check cortisol. I'm not gonna get into that for the purpose of this article because it, or this uh, video because it's just not relevant. Um, but let, suffice it to say that checking your serum cortisol is definitely good enough in the beginning. Yes, you may need salivary or urinary later, although that's even debatable, but checking your serum in the beginning is a good way to start. And that will, the cortisol is a good way to check for adrenal function. That's why you're doing this. So if you have thyroid problems, make sure you're doing this. And leave a comment below if you have ever, uh, if you believe you have this problem, um, and just give it, you know, give some insight into your experience here. So if you've had thyroid problems and you've treated it, but your symptoms didn't go, all go away until you addressed your adrenals or vice versa, something along those lines. And I should point out here that most of the time I see people coming from this box over to this box. So meaning they start with the thyroid problems and then have the adrenal problems on top of it. But it's also possible for you to have adrenal problems first, which then cause thyroid problems. But let me say this. In those cases, they're a lot easier to treat than the reverse. So thyroid to adrenal is much dip more difficult to treat than adrenal to thyroid. Um, just because the thyroid tends to have more of an impact on your adrenal function versus the other way around. So that's all I have for you guys today. Leave your questions or comments below and let me know if you have any of these symptoms and, and what your experience has been overall. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.